atmosphere. Wow. Whoa. You guys make me want to cry <laughs> because I truly feel, feel your love. I yeah. feel your excitement, and I'm yes. equally excited as well. Welcome to the celebration of Hope yes. 2019. My yes. name is Belinda, and this is my co-host, Raymond. Raymond. Yeah. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, may we invite the chairman of the steering committee of the celebration of Hope 2019 to open with a word of prayer. Bishop Renee's Ponaya, please. Please welcome him. Big round of applause. Yes! Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to the event we've all been waiting for, the Celebration of Hope. There are still many people waiting to come in, and we're very grateful that they are opening up more gates. So I trust everyone will be here in good time. Several of you are here because your friend or relative invited you. Some of you are here because you came to know about these gatherings and you decided to come. We are so glad that you are here. And we want you to know that no one is here by chance. You will have the opportunity this evening and also at the rallies over the next two days, you will have the opportunity to discover that there can be solid hope for every one of us in the journey of life. Hope is the certainty that there is something good coming your way. No matter how difficult life can be at times, and no matter how final death can seem to be at the end, there is hope for everyone and we want to convey this to you by way of songs testimonies and a clear message I am very happy to let you know that our speaker later this evening is the very gifted and humorous evangelist J. John he is from the United Kingdom and he has spoken to tens of thousands of people all over the world about this message of hope. Please would you help me to give him and all our friends who are here this evening a warm Singaporean welcome. Now, my dear friends, can I ask you to be quiet for a moment as I pray for God to bless us all this evening. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity we have to celebrate hope and to discover hope in the gatherings tonight and over the next two days. We thank you that we can come to you as we are and that you would receive us in your great love. We ask that all of us may hear you speaking to our hearts this evening. Show us that we are not alone in life, that you are God with us and that you are the God of all hope. We seek your blessing of a full and free life 
in the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. time of praise and of worship and of adoration you know I recognize that there is a king in this place there's a name that's above all of the names his name is Jesus and I believe that even as we sing tonight even as we open up our hearts to know him to receive him that he's gonna come and that he's gonna touch our hearts that he's gonna encounter us even tonight so, Father, we just welcome you in this place. If you want to lift your hands, you can lift your hands. If you want to turn your heart towards the Lord, let's just begin to turn our heart towards the great King who's in this place. Oh, we welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Jesus.
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Just grace that tore my heart to feel And grace my fears relieved How precious is that grace appeal The hour I first believed My chains, my chains are Thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, God, that you're here in this place. We give you all the glory and all the honor. And all of God's people say, Amen. Let's give him another shout of praise. Verse 4, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, he will my shield and portion be. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, forbear 
Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. Father, that even as we sing unto you, Lord, that you hear our hearts, you hear our prayers, Lord. So, Father, we dedicate tonight to you, God. And, Father, we, we pray that your love would be made known in this room, made known in this room, Lord, that every heart would begin to encounter you like never before. Lord, that we pray that eyes would be open. Lord, Father, that we would be able to see your face, Jesus. We pray this in your son's most precious name, and we say, Amen. Amen.
In us. Wow, you know something, Raymond? This is our second time on stage right now. Yeah. It almost makes me feel that the show has just begun because it is finally Full House. Hey, Singapore! Yeah, it's Full House. Woo! Can you take out your clapper and clap, everyone? Woo! I want to hear you. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Now, I'm getting even more <laughs> excited than before. <laughs> You know something, it is true that it is a miracle and we've been praying because yeah. when we came out about 7 o'clock, we had a lot of friends on our left and right, but in the middle section, it was empty. Yes. And my heart sunk. Yeah. And I was really sad, but I was hoping for a miracle to happen. Yeah. And it finally happened. Yes. Hey, Singapore, make some noise. Woo! Yeah, I can hear you. You know what? 
We were doing a half kalang wave. <laughs> we were not doing a full kalang you wave. You know, we had a we did a half kalang wave is because our friends in the middle were missing. Yes. I heard they were stuck outside. They yeah. needed some time to come in. And okay. in fact, we have more friends coming in into the stadium. Once yeah. the security is cleared, all of them will be here to celebrate yes. the celebration of hope with us tonight. Belinda, can we do one last kalang wave before we do the next part of the program? Of course, the next part of the program is definitely one of the highlights for me. Oh, yeah. And she's definitely one of my favorite, favorite <laughs> chess performers. <laughs> Yeah, my English is like all over the place now because she is my favorite chess oh, performer, yeah. whom we will introduce to you very, very shortly. Yes, Raymond. But we are going to do the Kalang wave right now, yeah? Yes, um, this time round with the middle section of audience right here with us. Okay. It is complete. Yeah, we And can we're going to do a very beautiful, perfect Kalang wave yes. right here at the Celebration of Hope, which yes. is streaming live by the way, so, okay. Yeah, are you ready for Kalang Wave? <laughs> yes, we are. So now, we're going to start from this section and we will go all the way. Can we have a clapper, there. please? Can we have a clapper, please? So what we're going to do is that we're going to get our audience, everybody, to start waving from the right all, all the way, the way <laughs> to, to the, the left. left. Okay. Can we do that? Just one yes. solid Kalang yes. Wave. And yes. that would be awesome, okay? Okay. I think all you know what all the all the clappers have been used up already. Yes. So Never it's mind. nothing. It's okay. It's okay. Let's We're do this start, together. Okay? Are you ready? So you are all seated down, and so from the right of on, on my right, you're gonna stand, stand up, up, okay? You're like gonna that. stand up and lift up your We're clappers. Gonna do that. Okay? Gonna go like this. Oh, then you go all the way around. The stadium, <laughs> all right. I love your energy, yeah. by the way. Oh. All right, Singapore, you're ready. I'm Are starting you ready? from the right side. Ready? One, two, two. three, go! go! Come on! Yes, guys. yes, 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 I'm this. seeing you. Fast Let's finish it on the left All side. Right. Come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. All right. <laughs> you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Please give yourself a big, big round of applause. Let's Woo! give yourself applause. Wow. 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 Raymond. You hear this? I can hear the whole stadium <laughs> roaring, yes. roaring with enthusiasm. Yeah, right. Amazing. This is truly, truly amazing. Ooh. Wow, children of God, you guys are amazing. And thank you so much for taking time out, precious time out, yes. to be with us tonight. Because Celebration of Hope is a three-day affair. Yes. We have tonight, we have tomorrow, and we have got Sunday. Yes. And tonight, we have somebody special. Very special. Very special because she is also Belinda's good friend. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even introduce her that way, you know. <laughs> yes, she may be. Personally, she is a very, very dear friend of mine. But yeah. I really want to do her justice by introducing her in a very proper way. Oh, yeah. In the most honourable way. Yeah. Well, this sister in Christ, she's not only beautiful, but to me, she sings like an angel. Oh, and yes. many years ago, when I saw her performing on stage, I actually went up to her like a little fan and in a fangirl mode, and I told her, I just want you to know that you are awesome and you sound like an angel. Yes. And till this very day, she is getting stronger and even better, and she's definitely making a comeback as not just as a singer, but as an even stronger child of God that yes. is going to penetrate into the marketplace to shine for Jesus. Christ. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, this incredible lady, her name is none other than, than Olivia Ong. Oh, let's welcome her. All right.
许碎片才能让回忆缠绵，何妨此花瓶中明天？谁带我寻获幸福的梦，却自己命中困锁？谁为我留下缱绻的天涯？心无事。时间，若是只能一辈子，几分苦涩。许碎片才能让回忆缠绵，何妨此花瓶中明天？谁带我寻获幸福的我，却自己命中困锁。谁为我留下？Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Everybody. Wow, this is amazing. Hello, Singapore. How are you? I'm Olivia Ong. It is my joy to be up here tonight, and it is so good to see you. We are here for one of the greatest mission, and it is to spread hope. Amen. <laughs> most of you know me as no. Actually, most of you know me through Ruyen, the theme song for the Lithuania, which I am utterly grateful for. And like the song, which speaks about 
broken dreams and finding hope in times of difficulties, I too have a story of hope to tell. And today, I don't want you to know me as Olivia Ong, the singer. I don't want you to see me from my looks or know me from my voice. I want you to know me as I am. The person I was, the person I am, and the person I hope to be. Everybody wants to be well-liked and accepted. Even as kids, we would do all sorts of funny things to gain the attention of adults around us. I remember there was once I learned some dance moves from a TV show, and I was very eager to show it off to my family members. And I did. I showed them this, popping, popping, locking, and pumping. <laughs> and you know what they called me? Something Paul. They're like, wah, 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 le kwa, le kwa. Jin something, uh. Now, I couldn't tell if they were impressed. But the more they said something, the harder I danced. And <laughs> looking back at the memory, I can laugh. But I was really affected by their reaction because I was a sensitive child. But that's when I also learned that adoration and affirmation had to be earned. And throughout my life, I saw that these things were hard to earn. Then at age seven, I saw Mariah Carey on TV performing live in front of tens of thousands of crowd. Very much like this one, but they were closer to the stage. And at the end of a performance, everyone cheered and clapped for her. No one called her Sam Singh Paul. But as a kid, my first thought was, how can anyone gain so much adoration? And I wanted it too. So when the opportunity came for me to pursue a solo singing career in Japan, I took it up without any hesitation at all. I was 17 then and full of hope. But what I thought was to be the exciting life of a superstar in the making, it didn't happen in reality. Instead of singing at sellout concerts, I was doing small gigs at Starbucks, uh, Tower Records, HMV music stores, and radio stations. And I interpreted all of that as rejection. I was definitely disillusioned and my self-confidence started to plunge. And I started to find ways and means, different methods of trying to make myself appear more attractive as a person. So instead of studying for my exams, because I was schooling at that time, I was studying the faces of fashion models on magazines. I literally bought magazines and picked out the prettiest faces, staring at them, thinking somehow I would evolve into a beautiful one like this. And it got so bad to the point where I couldn't even bring myself to look into the mirror because I thought I was ugly. <laughs> so when I couldn't fix what was on the outside, I started to compensate for what I thought I liked in the inside. So from studying faces, I studied people. I would assess the personalities of people whom I greatly admired, pick up their most attractive traits, and adopted them. I adopted them as my own. I pretended that I was this grand person. I was not. But the more I pretended, the more I felt trapped. I was trying to wear so many masks that I just didn't know who I was anymore. And the worst part, I couldn't stop myself. I didn't know how to. Because 
Who is I without these masks? Would people still love me? Would I even like myself? It was, I was very afraid of knowing. And finally in my desperation, I cried out to God. And in my darkest moment, he said to me, stop. Stop trying so hard to be someone else you're not. I want you to begin from a place of honesty. And this time, you begin with me. I realized that I don't have to be beautiful or perfect to be well-liked. I don't have to pretend. I don't have to wear masks. I don't have to hide myself. God accepts me. He loves me even with my flaws. When I realized all of it, the healing process within me began. And it's really in the last four years of my life that I've been learning how to be more honest with myself. And it's not an easy process, it's very scary. But what helped me through, what helped me to stay committed to the process was, I remember that God's love casts out all fear. And slowly, I grew out of my masks and into my own skin. All my life, I thought that adoration and affirmation had to be earned. I was always trying so hard to gain approval. But with God, you don't have to. There's a quote by Timothy Keller that sums it all up. It says, to be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear. But to be fully known and fully loved is a lot like being loved by God. It is what we need more than anything. It liberates us from all pretense, it humbles us from our own self-righteousness and it fortifies us for anything life can throw at us. And you know what? You are fully known and fully loved by God. My next song it's called Invisible Wings. God is my invisible wings. He carried me through the tough times. And my sincere hope is this. For anyone who's facing difficulties and for anyone who do not know God, know that God can lift you up if you let him. Thank you so much.
Hi, my name is Harold. This is how I came to know Jesus Christ. I used to work in construction sales and was the sole breadwinner of my household. At that time, I had a foul mouth and was extremely ill-tempered. I was also addicted to smoking. Once I had a prolonged flu and I decided to visit a GP who then convinced me to undergo a full body checkup. After undergoing an ECG, a treadmill test, and subsequent coronary angiogram, it was found that I have four blockages, ranging from 70 to 90%. It was recommended that I stop work immediately and to go for an urgent angioplasty procedure. During the angioplasty procedure, where there is no general anesthesia administered, I started seeing flashback on my life. There was this cold numbness that started creeping up from my feet. Fearing that death was coming upon me, I started calling out to all the gods I knew. In my desperation, I cried out, if there's a god up there, please help me. I don't want to die. I then heard a voice calling out to me, you know me, and yet you did not call for me. I recall that during my schooling days in a mission school, I learned about Jesus. So I asked the voice, Jesus, is that you? If you are here, save me. I will change from my old ways and all my wrongdoings in my life. Please forgive me. Suddenly, I saw what looked like a ball of fire coming towards my head and I felt a heat flowing down from my head throughout my freezing body. In tears, I heard the surgeon asking me if I was okay. The surgeon informed me that during the surgery, I nearly died when the artery split and they had to insert two stents to stabilize the tear and to save my life. While I was recuperating, I told my wife about my encounter with God and this strong feeling in my heart to go to a church and learn more about Jesus. Incidentally, an ex-classmate of mine passed to me a gospel track of a church healing service. I attended the service and subsequently gave my life to Jesus. I have dedicated my life more than 20 years ago. Until today, 
I still rejoice and thank God for allowing me to live each day with Him. Wow. How many of you are excited to be here on Celebration of Hope? Can I see your hands? Wonderful. In a few moments' time, Ken and J. John will come and share with us a brilliant word of God. But for this short segment, we want to get our hearts ready to pray. Now, I know some of you might say, you know, I'm not religious. I'm not a Christian. I'm not spiritual. I need to, to let you know that your family and your friends and your colleagues have been praying for you for weeks so that as you came in to this stadium at this very moment something is actually taking place in your spirit in your soul and so you got to open up your spirit and your heart and you got to find out is there a reason to celebrate? Is there true hope in humanity? I want us to just look at one powerful verse in the Bible. And then we're going to just pray two very short prayers. Very short prayers. And if God is real, as the church of Jesus Christ proclaims He is, then perhaps tonight, Many of us are going to experience a powerful touch from Almighty God Himself. Are you game for this? Turn to a few people and ask them, are you game to pray? Amen. Now the verse is this, in 2 Chronicles 7.14. And this is what it says. If my people who are caught by my name, it's on screen, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I don't know who you are, but I know that Every single one of us needs healing in our lives. Physical, emotional, relational, you name it. You came here tonight because it's not just an invitation from someone. But I truly believe that the Spirit of God drew you from all four corners of Singapore. To join us on opening night of celebration of hope. Again, I know you, you may not be religious. I'm a pastor. I'm a Singaporean. I love this country. I love my fellow man. And that's one thing that I desire is to see widespread transformation, revival, and change in our nation, can someone say a good amen? Whether you're Christian or not, you want this. You want this. So the first prayer, you're just going to stay seated. The first prayer is about humbling ourselves. The Bible just said that if God's people will humble themselves, humbling ourselves means that we are going to turn to this higher power and we're going to say to him, we are small, but you are big. We are weak, but you are strong. We have needs, but you are all sufficient. And so the first prayer goes like this. If you can, if, if you don't mind, would you take your right hand and place it at your heart? 
Would you do that, please? The first prayer is simple. I'm going to just say a quick prayer. It's a posture of humbling ourselves before an almighty God. I'm just going to take a minute to look. All right. Put your right hand on your heart right now. Come on, let's do that. And let's say a quick word of prayer. Father, there's a wonderful group of people in the National Stadium tonight and those that are watching online. Oh God, as we humble our disposition, humble our pride, and humble ourselves, Lord, we trust that you will hear from heaven that our prayers are not simply going to the atmosphere or the air, that our prayers are heard by God. You alone are hearing. Humble us, O oh God, so that our prayers are heard. In Jesus' name, would you all say a good? Amen. Oh, come on, you can do better. In Jesus' name, we all say? Amen. Wonderful. The second prayer requires that we stand up. And so I would like you to just take a few moments. Come on, let's stand up all across the stadium. It won't take too long. The second prayer is about healing. We're talking about all kinds of healing. The Bible says if we humble ourselves, we cry out to the Lord, we turn from our ways, He will hear from heaven. And the Bible promises, listen to this, He will heal our land. You know that stony part in your heart? You know that missing part in your soul? You know the equation you cannot answer in your life? God has the answer. God has a better way. God has the truest plan. And this is the posture I want you to have. If you can do this, please. I would like you to take two of your hands and cup it like this. Come on, do that right now. Come on, cup your hands right now like this. And I want you to lift up your hands because as we ask God to rain down His favor and His blessings and His prayer answers and His love and His infinite grace, I want you to experience it in the palm of your hands that He's touching you right where you need it most. You might say, Pastor, I have prayers for my health. Then as you cup your hand and lift it up to the Lord, may the Lord pour a healing touch upon your palms and may you be revived and revitalized. Amen. Some of you need prayers for your homes and your relationships. And as we call out to this God, I believe that God will be pleased to rain down an outpouring of mercy and goodness and His pleasure and blessings. Have any one of us believe that? Amen. Come on, so put your two hands up right now. Cup it before the Lord. And would you say this simple prayer after me? Would you do that? Say it out with the loudest enthusiasm you can give. At the top of your voice, say it as if you have no more breath left. Would you say this right now? God of heaven and earth. Oh, come on, say it out and cry out to Him. God of heaven and earth, I trust you tonight. I cry out to you tonight. Heal my heart. Heal my home. Heal my relationships. Heal this nation. Heal our land. In Jesus' precious name. Would you say a good amen? Let me see by a show of hands and applause. 
How many of you believe that as we cried out before this supreme God, that our prayers are already in motion to be answered? Amen. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord praise. Bless His holy name. Revival is here. Hope is here. Healing has come. Restoration to our nation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Praise God. Let's go. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. Can I shake your hand again? <laughs> Please give Pastor a big, big round Thank of applause. You. Thank yes. you. Pastor, thank you wow. so much for leading us into such a beautiful prayer, you know, for God Wasn't, to, yeah. to heal our hearts, yes. to take our hearts, put it on the palm of our hands, yes. lift it up to the Lord and say, Lord, yes. heal my heart, heal our hopes yes. that are completely hopeless. Yes. And I think this is what this event is all about, celebration of hope, yes. because there is hope in yes. our God. Amen. There is hope in Jesus Christ, and He's the one and only. Yes. And I believe that there are people who are here who have already been healed because we have prayed to God. Hallelujah. I know, I know it may oh, not be yes. something that it happens instantly sometimes. Yes. People come here with broken hearts. Yes. People come here with so much despair. And I know yes. sometimes you question God, why? Why did this even happen to me? Why did this even happen to my family? But I just want you to know one thing. God knows your pain. He knows your heartaches. He knows your struggles. And yes. the very fact that you are here in our midst tonight, you, know, you are here to experience a miracle. You know, Belinda, I want to tell everyone that I have experienced a miracle as well in my family. My own mother, in 2017, she was diagnosed of nose cancer stage 4. And you know what? God healed her totally. And she's 100% cancer free. And she's even here in the National Stadium this evening. Praise the Lord. Praise God for that. Praise the Lord. You know, Pastor Raymond, it's such a privilege to be able to host with the pastor. <laughs> All my years of being a professional host, it has always been hosting with another professional host. Yes. And for tonight, to be able to stand on the stage to praise God together with you and to host Celebration of Hope with you, it is such a privilege. Yes. So thank you so much. Please give and Pastor Raymond a oh. big, big round of applause. Oh, it's my thank honor, you. Belinda, to host with you. Thank you. Yes. And and now you know, let's yes let's and you know invite. what guys tonight we have another great speaker yes he has come all the way from england yes to singapore yes and before he steps onto the stage do you know he came into the makeup room to pray with us yes. immediately i felt the presence of god falling upon us just like that and i know tonight his message is gonna blow you away yes. his message is gonna touch you in a way that only God knows how. Uh, but before we welcome this special speaker to come on stage, let all of us, let all of us come with expectancy. Yes. Let all of us worship God and welcome His presence into the stadium right yes. now before yes. we invite our special speaker. Yes. Singapore, can you open your hearts, open your ears to listen to J. John who is a renowned author who have written 60 over books and he is a renowned speaker as well worldwide today let's invite J. John up on the stage and before we do that let's gonna... have some worship yes. session together in the house to praise God yes. in his presence shall we do that yes. big round of applause let's worship God together and let's this all house. stand Let's all stand, everybody. Let's stand on our feet and sing this song and as welcome. J. John comes into the stadium. And let's welcome his presence. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son and whosoever believes will not pay. Hey. 
shall have eternal life. I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to God alone for His love has saved. Set me free for God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal. of hope. Good evening. Please be seated. How wonderful to be in the National Stadium of Singapore. And so good to see so many of you here. And I know that people are still trying to get in. But how good it is to go through security so that we can feel safe. So let's be patient with all of the staff 
who are only doing their job. Why don't we thank all the staff? <laughs> and in addition, just before I started to walk here on the stage, I was informed that 15,500 people are watching this on live stream. So we want to welcome all of those people. On one of my previous visits to Singapore, I was in London on the aeroplane at Heathrow Airport, and I sat next to this lady, and I said to her, hello. And she said, oh, hello. And I said, where are you going? So she said, Singapore. And then she said, where are you going? So I told her. And then I said, what do you do? And then she told me. And then she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I work for a global enterprise. She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. We've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. We've got schools. We've got orphanages. We do marriage work. We do justice work. We do reconciliation work. We have feeding programs. I said, basically, we look after people from birth to death and we deal in the area of behavioral alteration. She went, wow, what's it called? I said, it's called the church. Have you heard of it? So 227 churches and Christian ministries are hosting this tonight. And the organizers, they've asked me to explain something of Christianity. And I'm going to do that three times. Once tonight, once on Sunday morning, and on Sunday evening. So, it, come again, because I'm going to give three different messages. And especially, if you can come Sunday morning, we still have seating available. So, I've come all the way from London. I don't think you've got far to come. So make plans to come again, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Now, what an amazing evening we've already had. And we've been thinking of the freedom of hope. A lot of people's hope is a bit like a hospital gown. You're usually not as well covered as you think you are. Hope in the Bible is called the anchor of the soul. There are those who have no hope. There are those who have false hope. And there are those who have true hope. We can live for 40 days without food. We can live for eight days without water. 
we can live for four minutes without air. But we can't survive without hope. Without hope, we can't cope. Turn to somebody and say this. Without hope, we can't cope. Thank you. And that is so true. We are living at a time where we have a wealth of information and a poverty of attention. We get detoured by distractions dressed as attractions. And many people do not know where they're going. Many people suffer from the Columbus Syndrome. Columbus set off and he didn't know where he was going. When he got there, he didn't know where he was. When he got back, he didn't know where he'd been. Many of us suffer from the Columbus Syndrome. A king said to this man, you can have as much of my land as you can walk round in one day. What an offer. So at the beginning of the day, with this incredible offer, the man thought I can have as much of the king as I can walk round in one day. So he walked and he walked and he kept walking. He persisted. He didn't take a pause. He didn't take a break. He kept going. He kept going because he could have as much of the land as he could walk around in one day. And as the day drew near to end, he collapsed on the floor and died. How much land did he get? Six foot under. If he had taken a coffee break, a lunch break, and a tea break, he would have had a lot of land. Some of us are driven. One more rung of the ladder. One more rung of the ladder. One more rung of the ladder. And then we get to the end of the ladder and we find that it's leaning against the wrong building. Many people are caught up in the rat race of life. And even if you win the race, you're still a rat. As one philosopher said, Mick Jagger, I can't get no satisfaction. And many people today cannot get satisfaction. So here is the truth. I will explain the Christian truth to you tonight, Sunday. And then when I've concluded, if you would like to follow this truth, if you would like to come back to the tr truth, if you got distracted, I will ask you to step out of your seats, out of the road, and I will ask you to come and stand here on the pitch. And those of you in the higher levels, I will ask you to go to different areas. So I'm warning you so that in 30 minutes, you know that that's what I'm going to do. What is the truth? Just before I began to speak, we sang a song. And that song, the words are taken from the Bible. John chapter 3, 
verse 16. And those words say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. So whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is offering us three things. The first thing that Jesus is offering us is forgiveness from the past. We all need forgiveness. The psychiatrist, Jung, he said, I could dismiss 95% of all my patients if they could be assured of forgiveness. We need forgiveness. A mother said to her husband, I need to get on, look after their daughter. So the father said, okay. He thought, what could he do to occupy his daughter? He's flicking through a magazine. He sees a map of the world. He says to his daughter, watch what I'm going to do. He cut the map into small squares and he muddled them on the floor. He said to his daughter, what I want you to do is to put the squares back together again like a puzzle to make the map of the world. When you've done that, come and find me. So the father thought, keep her busy. A couple of minutes later, she says, Daddy, I've done it. He thought she couldn't have done it, but let me go and see. He went and had a look. All the squares were put in exactly the right place to make the map of the world. He said to his daughter, how did you know where to put all the squares? She said, when you were cutting the map out, I looked on the other side and I saw a picture of a man and a woman. And I thought, if I could put the man and the woman back together again, I could put the world back together again. You see, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. Turn to somebody and say this. The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. That's right. What is at the heart of the problems in the whole of the world? It's people. We all have a heart problem. We've got a diseased heart. And it is out of the heart. The Bible says it is out of the heart that come the seeds that affect our lives, that affect our relationships, that affect our families, that affect our communities, that affect our countries. It's out of the human heart. Now, just imagine you passed out of this life now. You woke up in a theater, sitting there on your own. In front of you is a huge screen. All of a sudden, the doors open, an angel flies in, comes up to you and says, welcome to the theater of judgment. Relax. Watch the screen. There on the screen, you see your life. Everything you ever did here on earth. Everything you ever said here on earth. And everything you ever thought, you see it on the screen. At the end of the film, as you're recovering, the angel comes back and says, there's going to be a second showing. 
all the people who were featured in the film of your life are all waiting outside. We're just going to let them in to view your life for second time. How would you feel if your life were judged on that basis? That is exactly how God judges us. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, many of us think it doesn't matter, but it does. All that stuff on the film disconnects us from God. That's why God seems far away. And it works a bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you've got an overdraft, I've got an overdraft, you can't help me, I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. Jesus Christ was the only one in credit. Jesus came into this world to do something for us. And he came into this world not to rub it in, but to rub it out. That's why Christianity is good news. Jesus Christ did something for us. He came into the world to die on a cross because by dying on a cross, it was as if he was cashing a check signed with his own blood to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft, to set you free from the past, to wipe the film of your life clean. Wipe it clean. That's what Jesus wants to do for every single one of us. There was a famous artist. He went back to the very small rural community where he was born and brought up. And as he's walking around the stores, he's there's an antique shop. He looks in the window. He cannot believe what he sees. In the window is one of his masterpieces. It was a painting that he had painted years before he was famous. The frame was broken. The picture was dirty. The picture was scratched, but it was his. But he couldn't go into the antique shop and say to the manager, that's my painting, give it back to me. If he wanted it back, he had to buy it back before he could clean it, restore it, and reframe it. That is what Jesus Christ did for every single one of us. He bought us back. He bought us back by dying on a cross so that he could clean us, he could restore us, and he could reframe us. When I became a Christian, my mother said to me, you're brainwashed. I said, mother, my brain has been washed. If you only knew, mother, what was in my brain, you would be pleased it got washed. Many Christians can testify to a cleansing. Jesus wants you to be cleansed and he can clean you because of what he did on the cross. Jesus is offering you forgiveness from the past. Secondly, Jesus is offering us new life 
today. Today. Think of your life like a car. Okay, just work with me on th with this analogy. So, thinking of being a Christian, a follower of Jesus, would using that analogy means that Jesus is in the car of your life. I know in a crowd of this size, there are many of us that have never invited Jesus into our lives. And I hope tonight, whether you're in the stadium or you're watching on live stream, you will invite Jesus into your life. Now, many of us, we have already invited Jesus into the car of our lives, okay? The question is this, where is Jesus in the car of your life? Do you drive your car to church, unlock the boot, get Jesus out for a religious happy hour, end of the service, put him back in the boot. Other people have got him on the back seat, a bit of a passenger. Some people have got him in the front passenger seat, bit of a companion, but still a passenger. Some people have got him in the driving seat, but they are back seat drivers. Jesus gets to an intersection, he turns left. Where are you going? I'm going down the road of generosity. <laughs> I don't want to be generous. It gets to another intersection. Jesus turns right. Where are you going? I'm going down the road of forgiving others. Sometimes it's easy to say that I'm a follower of Jesus. But actually, he's not in the driving seat. When Jesus is in the driving seat of your life, his Holy Spirit comes into your life and his Holy Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So, one test in answering the question, where is Jesus in my life, is this. How much love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control do you have? If you are lacking those, it probably means you have to reposition Jesus. And one of the things about these three days, celebration of hope, it's a bit like when you take your car for an annual service, sometimes you need some new brake pads. Sometimes you might need new windscreen wipers. Sometimes you need more than an oil change. You might need a new engine. And some of us might need a new car. This is an opportunity for all of us to realign our lives. So some of you tonight, I'm going to ask you, you know that Jesus is part of your life, but he might be in the boot. He might be a passenger. He's not really in the driving seat of your life. So I'm going to ask you to get out from your seat and come, either come here or to other locations that I'll tell you about, to say, I want to reposition Jesus and I want to put him in the driving seat of my life. When we do that, it changes us. 
We become better men and women. We become better fathers and mothers. We become better husbands and wives. We become better employers and employees. We become better neighbors. We become better citizens because we honor God. We honor the government. We pay our taxes. We do the things that the good book instructs us to do. Forgiveness from the past, new life here today. And thirdly, a hope for the future. That verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God does not want any one of us to perish. Jesus, it's recorded in the Bible, he said, men and women are traveling along one of two roads. Men and women are going into one of two doors. Men and women are building their lives on one of two foundations. Men and women are heading towards one of two destinies, heaven and hell. This is a reality. And Jesus does not want any one of us to perish, but he wants us to have everlasting life. You see, we can have a hope for the future and live our lives here on earth in the light of eternity. Do you realize that our lives here on this earth, even if we live a hundred years, is a blip on the eternal screen? God has prepared a place for us. You begin to experience that here on earth and you live your life with that joy and expectation for the future. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future. Jesus is offering us forgiveness, freedom, friendship, fulfillment, and a future. This is the essence of Christianity. Every one of us is being offered forgiveness from the past, new life here today, and a hope for the future. All of it begins when we accept the free gift of Jesus. This is a free gift. And in a, a, a minute or two, I'm going to invite you to accept this. Those of you that have never accepted it, accept it tonight, whether you're in the stadium or whether you're tuned in on live stream, accept it. And here in the stadium, if you're in the lower levels, one to three, I'm going to ask you in a moment to get up, out from your seat, out of the rows, come with, with your friends, come with your family. It's beautiful. Come together. 
We often do that when, when a baby's going to be born. The family all want to come. Well, come with your family, come with your friends, and come and stand all over this pitch. The stewards will direct you. If you're in the upper level, all you have to do is get up with your family and friends, and the stewards will direct you to other areas. When you've come down and gone to those other locations, during the singing of Amazing Grace, which was written by John Newton. John Newton, he said, I have broken all of God's commandments. I was a liar. I was a cheat. I was a thief. I was a murderer. I was an adulterer. But I encountered Jesus and he transformed my life. And he wrote this hymn, Amazing Grace, to try and articulate what had happened to him. So we're going to respond during the singing of that. When we conclude, and you're all standing here and in the upper locations, this is what's going to happen. I will, be, I will pray a prayer, and I will ask you to pray the prayer that will enable you to accept Christ's offer, free gift of forgiveness from the past, new life today, and a hope for the future. Then I will say a prayer for you. After that, someone will introduce themselves to you. They are going to give you the Bible free. If you've already got a Bible, have a new one. It's really nice. Specially produced for this event. They're going to just have a very brief word with you and they're going to say a prayer for you. And then you and your family and friends, you can just go off. We won't keep you long. Some of you know you need to do this. And some of you have brought friends here or relatives. And in a moment, turn to them and ask them, would you like to accept Christ's offer? And if they say yes, bring them down here or take them up to the other locations. Do that. Some of you, you need to relocate, reposition Jesus. What better place to do it in the National Stadium of Singapore? Because for these three days, this is Singapore's cathedral. This is the cathedral. This is sacred space. Come down and say, I'm going to reposition Jesus and this is going to be a new beginning in my life. Can I ask all of you to please stand? If you're watching on live stream, can I ask you to stand up? It might be that you're just sitting. Just stand up. Now, I know what this is like. You're wondering, I'm in the middle of a row. How am I going to get out? All you have to do is move. Honestly, people know where you're going and they'll make way for you. And if they don't, push them. Seriously. Don't allow anyone to hinder you from coming and receiving Christ and, and repositioning him tonight. So in a moment, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. Four verses. Please don't wait. 
till the last line of the fourth verse. Okay? Right? You got four verses to come down here, or if you're in the higher levels, just stand up and and the stewards will redirect you. Okay? Now, if you are unable to come out here or walk up the steps, all you have to do is, if you're seated, is put your hand up. Someone will come to you. So, listen. Some people pretend to be Christians when you can actually become one. Don't pretend. Be a real one. Begin that journey tonight. As we begin singing Amazing Grace, this is your opportunity to come straight down. Come with your family. Come with your friends. Amazing Grace, come now. Wonderful. I, it's great to hear you applauding because you know what the good book says? The good book, the Bible, it says whenever we receive Christ, there's rejoicing in heaven and on earth.
So we want to say welcome to you. Welcome. Welcome everyone that has come down here to say that they want to receive Christ. And everyone that wants to reposition Jesus. Now I realize that I can see that people are still coming. So what we're going to do, we're just going to sing those, the last, the, the first verse and the last verse. Now look, come on, don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. If you know tonight's your night, come on, come down with your friends, come down with your family. Let's sing the first verse, the last verse, and then we're going to pray. Come now, come. Great. Okay. Now, can I ask? Can I ask all those of you on the response team? Could you stop now? Could you all look at me? Response team, can you stop? Every, all the response team, can you please stop and look at me now? Response team. I need you all to stop for a moment, please. The next minute or two is going to be very, very important. Okay, please, everyone stop talking. <laughs> I'm going to now pray a prayer. I will pray it once so you know the words. The second time I pray the prayer, I'd like you to pray the prayer out loud. If you're watching this on live stream and you want to receive Christ or reposition Jesus, pray the prayer. Wherever you are in the stadium, if you just want to reaffirm your faith, join in and pray the prayer with us. Okay, here's the prayer. Just close your eyes, everyone. Just have this moment now. Here's the prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for offering me forgiveness from the past. Together, Thank you, Jesus, for offering me forgiveness from the past. Thank you, Jesus, for offering me new life here today. Thank you, together, thank you, Jesus, for offering me new life today. Thank you, Jesus, for offering me a hope for the future. Together, thank you, Jesus, for offering me a hope for the future. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Together, 
Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I ask you now, I ask you now to forgive me, Cl cleanse my life, cleanse my life. I open the door of my life now. I open the door of my life now. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come into the driving seat of my life. Come into the driving seat of my life. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Help me from this day on, help me from this day on to build my life on you. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. A prayer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness. May you know his cleansing. May you know his presence, his peace. And may you know his protection as you endeavor to follow Jesus. And I know we prayed earlier for healing, but we're just going to pray again for anyone here who has a concern about their health. We pray for your healing grace on each of us. Where there is any kind of disease or sickness or infection, we pray, cleanse that from our bodies. We pray for health and wholeness and well-being in body and mind and spirit. And we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is wonderful to see so many of you here responding and maybe others watching in, tuning in. And listen, we just want to encourage you. We want to give you this Bible. We want to have a word with you and we want to pray for you. Please seize the opportunity of this weekend. Before we know it, it's going to be over. So, come on Sunday morning. Come on Sunday night. Let's fill the stadium morning and evening. Come back and bring friends, family, neighbors, and colleagues. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. And now I'm going to hand over to my friend, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you, J. John. Thank you, J. John, for bringing a wonderful message of God's love to all of us. We want to thank many of them, our friends who are here at the pitch or at level four, and who are here to respond. And on the screen, you will see the QR code or to visit the uh, web okay. link deployed on the screen if you want to respond. Hell, we want to request for some of you who have brought your friends here tonight to wait for a while for your friends to complete their responses to the Lord. And I assure you, you'll be able to meet up with them once they advance. Th finally, we want to thank you for coming here tonight and being with us this evening. We trust you had a great experience. Please continue to invite your family or your friends back here tomorrow morning for the 10.30 for the children and the family rally. There's still lots of space for children and family tomorrow morning. And uh, we want to wish you a very blessed, good evening. See you tomorrow morning or Sunday morning and Sunday evening. God bless you.